Hey guys, Shane here, Echo Soundworks. In this video, I'm gonna show you the three best ways to sample inside a Logic 10. So there's a bunch of different ways to do this, but these three specific techniques will get you the best results most often. At least they, they work for me quite well. So what we're gonna start out though is we're gonna look at how you can actually get cool content to sample inside Logic. And I know a lot of you might be thinking that's a no-brainer, just drag and drop your audio in. Well, you can also get content to sample and to chop up and to mangle pretty much from anywhere. So I'm gonna show you how you can actually sample audio straight from your computer, like YouTube, Spotify, it's called like modern crate digging. And we're also gonna look how you can create your own loops, your own samples to chop up and mangle. So we're gonna cover both kind of a hip hop production point of view, as well as an EDM point of view in this video. I want it to be all encompassing. So let's dive into logic and get started. All right, so I'm just gonna cut to the chase. The three best ways to sample inside of Logic 10, in my opinion, go like this. The first best way is to just chop up the audio in your window, your main editing window. With the time stretching being a lot easier now in Logic, and then also the ability to transpose, easily transpose the pitch of different chops of audio, it's really easy to mangle loops, mangle samples, and get that cool kind of chopped up sampled vibe. Now I think the second best, most intuitive musical way to handle your sampling needs in Logic would be to use Alchemy. A lot of you guys may not know this, but Alchemy isn't just a synth. You can actually import your own samples, multi-samples. It can do everything the EXS24 can and more. Now, the third best way would be the EXS24. That's typically what most Logic users have used. I have historically hated the EXS24. I don't like how it sounds. I don't like how it pitches things up and down. There's no time stretch. I could rant for minutes about why I hate that, but it's still a viable option, and a lot of producers get great results using it. So we're going to check out all three options in this video. Now, I want to show you uh, the first option is just chopping up audio in your main editing window. So I'm going to quickly touch on how to get you know loops and things to sample. Well, I think there are three main ways to do that. You can, of course, use Apple Loops and sample packs and construction kits. Like, obviously, we sell those, we make those, and so I understand that, and I like using those, right? But you can actually make your own loops, your own samples to sample inside of Logic. So check this out. I loaded up an instance of the Studio Grand, our Studio Grand Piano, and I played a progression that was just kind of hovering around F an F minor chord with some extensions here and there. Sounds like this. Okay, so that doesn't sound like a sample, right? It sounds like someone's playing piano. Well, what I did was I bounced that to audio, and then I layered it with an instance of a serum patch from Sphere, playing the same thing, it just sounds way different. It sounds more synthetic, right? I bounce that to audio as well. So then what I get is two audio tracks. So obviously this is like sampling, right? We've pulled in a sample now, we're working with audio. So what you can do is you can always pitch things up and down, chop it, reverse it, add effects, change the pitch to certain parts. You can do a lot of things. So basically what I did was on the piano loop, I added these effects. We have some distortion from Isotope Trash, some, some EQ. Uh, this is a really cool plugin. It's called RC20 Retro Color. It's more expensive than it should be, but it you can add like vinylizing effects, tape flutter, that sort of stuff. Really cool effects. Then I added the halftime plugin, which I'm going to turn off for now. And we have some FabFilter Pro Q2, which I think I was just using for reference. So let's just turn that off. So here's the piano now as an audio track. And I'll turn off all the effects. So I reversed these two hits right here. So this one's reversed, right? This one's reversed. But I'm working with a sample, so I can still do a lot more stuff to it, right? So we're going to turn on those effects now. now let's turn on halftime. Halftime, I have it set in a way that basically just pitches it down. Right? And now it really does sound like I sampled something especially with the RC20. Adding that vinyl, it sounds like I took something from a record, right? It sounds very different from this. But you know, it, that's our source sample. So let's bring back in that other patch. All right, so... And this is a good example of being able to mangle audio. It'd be very hard to get this exact sound with MIDI. So what I did was, uh, I'm going to duplicate this track so you can see. I This track right here, this section of it, we'll copy it down. It went like this. Now, so what I did 
was I wanted to have this kind of duh, 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 this stutter. So I took my uh, scissor tool here, chopped it right there. These are two separate notes, right? So then what I did was I just copied and pasted this to there, and then I copied and pasted that to right there. Right, and if we play this now, right, you get a, you get that kind of like you're playing it on a machine or an MPC type vibe. So that's why I like working with just you know my audio. Now, what you can do is you can change the pitch of these quite easily. So these are both the same the same note. So I'm going to pitch this one up to its normal octave, and I'm going to pitch this one down or pitch this one up as well. So now it's going to kind of go back and forth between low and high, low and high. So let's solo this. Right, so that might be really cool with this piano. Now, in this section right here, where I have this stutter on this one patch, I'm not doing that kind of chop stutter with the piano. So when you layer these together, and then this one right here, this last chord hit, I reversed on the piano, but not the key patch from Sphere. So let's mute the MIDI. All right, now I'm going to show you something really, really cool. So let's take this uh, key patch again, and we're going to duplicate a track. Let's mute the piano. I'm going to show you some like advanced, <laughs> advanced reversing techniques. So if I reverse this whole this whole section, actually, we're going to commit this to audio. That's good. All right, so if you reverse this whole thing, right? If I go here, let's turn off our. Uh, Let's turn off our flex pitch so we can reverse. So if I reverse this whole thing, it sounds really cool. But it's playing the whole progression in reverse. So check this out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go and chop each hit up so I can reverse basically everything independently. And what, will, what this will do is it will actually play back the melody in the exact same way. It's just reversing the samples. So it is freaking crazy. So let's try this. So check this out. So I'm going to highlight all these. Now, because I've chopped them, if I reverse them, it's going to reverse them within the region. All right, so let's move on to the second best way to sample inside a Logic, and that is to import samples into Alchemy. Now, there's a few different ways to do this, so I'm going to cover both, so I'm going to go qu pretty quick. So, what you can do to actually sample and get samples into your computer, basically sample your computer, it's kind of like crate digging for the modern producer. And you could take acapellas, you could take whole songs, you could take instrumentals, whatever you want, is to just use QuickTime. So check this out. I'm going to load up QuickTime, and I'm going to go to File, and I'm going to select New Audio Recording. It'll bring up this screen. You need to make sure that you have the proper audio interface selected. You can see that's tracking my voice right now. So then I found a video of someone playing... So I found a video of someone playing a Kodo on YouTube, and I recorded that. In here, so all I have to do is hit record and then play. You get the idea, then you hit stop, and then you have the recording. So you, you're gonna save this, right? And then re import it into logic. I did that. And it took me about 15 minutes to do, and I ended up with something like this. All right, so here is the Kodo sample. So what you're going to do is you're going to find a passage or a section that you want to work with. Uh, the section that I started working with was over here, so I'm just going to delete this one. So it sounds like this. So then what you're going to do is you're going to highlight the audio, right-click on it. You're going to go to Slice at Transient Markers. This will chop up the audio. Right, and if I play it back, if I play it all back together, it'll play just like the normal loop. So now what you can do is you can get this into Alchemy. So this is where a lot of people would just use the EXS24 by right-clicking, going Convert, and converting it to a new sampler track. Well, it, it's actually pretty easy to get it into Alchemy. So what you do is you right-click, and you go to Convert still, but Convert to New Audio Files. And then what you'll do 
is you'll select each region to be saved as its own audio file, and you'll be able to drag these in and import these into Alchemy. All right, so I've opened up Alchemy. I'm going to go to File, and we are going to go to Initialize Preset. <laughs> Sounds terrible. So what we're going to do is go to the Advanced tab, click on Source A, and select Import Audio. Now you need to navigate to where you, you know, if you're, if you're following along, if you chop something up, you need to navigate to that folder of chops, right? I saved all of my chops to one folder, so here's the Kodo chops. So the cool thing about Alchemy is you have one, two, three, four, five different modes to import a sample. And you can see here we have sampler. Now in each mode, you have two different pitch modes, pitch and drum. So let's say I just wanted to play this Kodo chop, that note right there, which sounds like a, uh, it sounds like a G. So I'm pretty sure this is a G note. So what I can do is I can actually just import this single sample, and then I can play it as a sampler up and down the keyboard chromatically. So let's do that now. I'm just going to hit import. So now I can just let's pitch my keyboard up. We're already off and running. Now, one of the benefits of Alchemy over the EXS24 is that Alchemy will, will figure out the pitch of the sample. So if I were to import that same sample into EXS24, I'd have to know the pitch, and I'd have to go change it in the back end once it's there. So if we go and hit Edit, we can see that we have a screen that looks like a full-fledged sampler, and it is. We can change where each you know, zone basically lives on the keyboard. We can create different zones, create groups. We have loop options. We can change the start and end time. So I'm going to go into the sample a little bit. Right? It is pretty easy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pitch this all down. Let's pitch it down some semitones here. Right, and we're, we are off and running. It's really easy to set this up. So another benefit of Alchemy is you have all these awesome filter types. Bit Crusher, Combs, Compressor, FM, Format, right? Just crazy stuff. So if we... If we uh, turn this up. Right, we've now applied a Format filter. apply an FM filter. I mean, there's just so much you can do inside of Alchemy to really twist and mangle your samples. I don't know why people would ever use the EXS24 anymore. So speaking of that, you can actually open EXS24 instruments inside of Alchemy. So Apple's trying to get you to use Alchemy over EXS24 for sure. So let's go and create a new instrument. So we're going to go edit. And I'm sorry, we're not going to get out of edit. We're going to go and select a new source. So let's import audio. So that's how you can create melodic chops, right? Things you can play melodically or play chordically. Well, what about to create like a chop up and down the keyboard? Well, let's do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and select the chops that I want to play. So I'm just going to go through and select a bunch of different chops. This is how I made that one loop. So then I'm just going to highlight a bunch, pop them in. So we still want to be a sampler. But instead of selecting pitch for mapping, so it's going to try to, with pitch, it'll try to make it chromatic. We're going to select drum, and I'm going to hit import. So now starting at C1, I can just, I can just walk up and down the keyboard, and it will play in order of those samples I just imported. Right, and that is how I created this. Right? So another cool thing you can do with this is you don't have to use it just as a sampler, right? So this is, you know, we can see where everything's mapped. We can change it, delete it, move it around, do whatever we need to do. But you can actually, if we go to our source again, import audio, let's do the same thing. We'll just take a bunch, drag them over. I don't have to use sampler mode, and I can still do this drum mapping. So let's do granular and hit import. So now if I play it... All right, so for the sake of being thorough, let's look at the third best way to sample inside of Logic, and that's going to be the EXS24. So I've already kind of shit on it a couple times in the video, but like I said, I want to be thorough. So we're going to go back to the Kodo example here. So what I'm going to do is right-click on this. I'm going to go to Convert to New Sampler Track, and we're going to select Regions, and I'm going to say, okay, I want to start at C1. So Logic is going to make a new EXS24 instrument, and it's going to give you a MIDI, a MIDI region with notes that looks kind of scalar, so when you play it, it sounds just like your audio. Let me turn this way down. So then if I go into the EXS24, 
The first sample is mapped to C1. Right, and I can work up and down my keyboard. So then, of course, you can add more release, cut off that sort of stuff. It's just you don't have as much control over the sound, and then editing it, editing it is a little bit harder. I think the group editor and the zone editor inside of Alchemy is a lot easier to work with, and it's just, just simpler. So but that's how a lot of people do it. Still, they will just sample directly into this. Now, it is nice that you don't have to import. It just makes the instrument for you, but I think ultimately you get a lot more control in Alchemy. So guys, that sums up this look at the three best ways to sample inside of Logic 10. If you have any questions or comments or suggestions, post them below, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you guys like this video and want to see more like it, hit that like and subscribe button. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I'm Echo Soundworks. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I will see you next time.